So uh, when I say electric cars, what do you guys think of? Elon Musk, Tesla, maybe a Porsche. Why not Henry Ford? Henry Ford made the first ever electric car 100 years ago. It cost him about a million dollars to make the first prototype, build it, test it. It's about $40 million worth today. One of his really good friends back then was Edison. We all know the name. He famously worked with Ford, and once he said Ford had a vision where all of New York is going to be electric cars and electric trucks zipping around. We all know that vision didn't happen. It's a glorious vision. But what if that vision actually did end up happening? The world we live in today would be drastically different. Right? Instead, we're just addicted to gasoline cars. In the US in 2020, gasoline cars produce 600 million tons of carbon dioxide. It's this incredible amount of volume. And that year, we didn't even leave our houses. Imagine how much it's producing right now, right? I'm sure you've heard this pitch before, climate crisis is real, we all have to stop what we're doing and work on climate, which is absolutely the thing that everybody's talking about. But the damage we're causing behind the wheel is absolutely real. It's a big problem. We need to find a way to solve it. So I'm here to tell you that we can actually solve it. Electric cars are the solution, but it's not quite what you think it is. The way it exists is not how it is that's going to solve climate change. Before I talk to you about our story, our vision, I want to talk about my story of why and how I got to this stage. Years ago, I used to be a software engineer working for Disney, and I just didn't know what my purpose was in life. I was seeking for it, soul searching. Really, what am I doing in this dead-end job? That's kind of what was happening in my head. I joined Uber in the, in the fact that uh, you know, I, saw, I got sold in the vision, climate crisis is happening, I want to make a big impact. The only skill I had was software engineering. So I joined Uber to make a big impact. I led their autonomous teams in the vision that full robotaxi is going to change everything. The autonomous car, full autonomous car is going to change everything. That's when 2030 Paris Impact Study came out, the agreement came out, and it says that for the Earth to be preventing, for us to prevent 1.5 degrees of warming, we need to reduce carbon emissions by 7.6% every year from 2020 to 2030, which means that this is the most important decade we're living in for the entire future generations. We need to reduce carbon emissions by 45% by 2030. It's a really, really, really large number if you think about it. We have to work collectively to make this happen. At the current rate, or even if you try to increase this carbon emission, even a small margin, we're in a very, very scary trajectory. Uh, New York City is one of my favorite cities in the world. I love the museum, I love the people, I love the culture. It's heavily under risk of getting flooded at this current trajectory. If you think about it, there's going to be about um, three-folds increase in heat waves, massive increase in flooding, massive forest fires that will start at the current rate as we're going by 2030. It is clear that this trajectory is not sustainable. We need to find an alternative way. We need to all come together to make this actually happen, this planet for us to survive. And for me, transportation is dear to me. We need to find a way to better improve transportation, and it's very clear. An electric car industry was just getting started back then, and people just stole, slowly started buying Teslas, owning cars that were all electric. So I was wondering, how can one guy make a big impact? How can I contribute towards this? What is the most immediate problem I can help solve? It finally hit me. What if the entire world is able to drive only electric cars? That's when I said, I'm going to leave Uber. Incredibly high paying job. Instead, I'm going to go start my own company. I started Halo Car, my own car company, with a vision to transition the entire world to all electric vehicles. We have the ability to drive our own electric cars. For the first time ever, I felt like I have a meaning in my life, contributing towards this world. I'm going to talk about some stats. You guys ready for some stats? 
<laughs> we are addicted to cars. America has 250 million cars driving around right now. And that's only in this country, billions worldwide. Only 2% of the entire cars are electric. That's a shameful number. Why is this so low? Why are we not shifting fast enough? It's a really big question that haunted me for a while. And it's very clear, if we try to deconstruct this, the only way we get access to a car today is by owning a car. You have to go buy it. An average EV cost, the baseline model, costs about $40,000. If you like add it a little extra, very easily it's going to set you back $56,000. Not everybody can afford this. I can't afford it. And not only that, even if you try to buy that car, you have to retrofit your house with some form of charging infrastructure. That's going to cost you another $1,200. But even if you're able to afford it, you can't do it because your apartment complex won't let you do it. Or your rental car, rental house cannot let you do it. So it's clear, this is just not the right fit where, where we're trying to go towards. So now let me accelerate this, okay? What if all the cars magically become EV in the world, in the US? I'm gonna talk about some really crazy numbers here, okay? We have 250 million cars in the US. Overnight changes to all electric. We need to completely overhaul our manufacturing altogether. We need to overhaul how we produce batteries. We need to overhaul our entire lithium, man lithium mining infrastructure. We don't even have close to the mining infrastructure to mine lithium from the top surface of the earth. This is not even there. Then comes to charging stations. We need to install so many charging stations to at least par our gas stations. And every charging station costs way more than gas stations today. So it's purely incredibly difficult for us to install this many charging stations. And don't even get me started on the grid. It's a catastrophe. It's a disaster that's just waiting to happen. Okay, so if the solution is not buying EVs, what the hell is the solution, right? This really got me digging into more stats, okay? Every car we buy is being parked 95%. So if all of us are sitting here, all of our cars are being parked somewhere, right? 23 hours in a day, every car is being parked. So which means that for every car we manufacture, we're making eight new parking spaces with it. And sometimes you're wondering, what happened to the affordable housing? Where is it going? It's going to parking lots. Very clear. This is the future that we're trying to accelerate. This is not the future that we need to be in. We need to radically change this. We need to radically rethink this. So if car ownership is not the thing, we, we're very clear that EVs are the future. It's very clear that we need to drive less. We need to own lesser number of cars. The EVs have to be driving a lot more, moving a lot more people. It's very, very evident. So what's the solution? An autonomous car? A robo-taxi? We've been selling this for a while. We've been eating it up, saying, hey, the future is going to be all autonomous cars. Or where are we with it? Let's try to understand that a little bit deeper. A very, very famous person on Twitter, I'm sure you all know, he's also trying to buy this company, Twitter, as well. And he said, by 2016, we'll have fully autonomous cars all around. He said the same thing in 2019, same thing in 2020. 2023, we still don't have it. Why do we not have it? Have you all thought about that? I'll talk about that a little bit more. So an average autonomous car generates about 20 terabytes of data per hour. It requires several billion miles of driving to collect enough data to train the machine learning models required to even attain the full self-driving future we talked about. So at 20 terabytes an hour, it will literally take us hundreds of years to collect the amount of data required. And if we were to project this, it will fill up 83 Empire State buildings full of hard disks before we can actually attempt at this reality. This is why the industry has burnt $100 billion and we still don't have robo-taxis. Okay, so now you're like, okay, fine, guy, you, you're selling all these crazy stories. What's the future? What's the solution? You ready for the sexy, mind-blowing solution? Car sharing. Yeah, it might not sound sexy now, but that's actually the kind of future. I'll tell you about why. 
Remember Kung Fu Panda? We all thought that, that it's not going to be the superhero, but end of the day, that was the actual superhero. So that's what car sharing is to me. So companies like Zipcar have shown incredible impact. They have actually reduced costs for custom customers. People have saved $800. People have given up their cars and reduced the carbon emission while doing so. And this industry is projected to be $6 billion by 2027. And 60 million new people or new users will be onboarding to services like this because they're just tired of owning a car. This is promising, but at the same time, let's be honest, car share sucks today. If you were to use a zip car, you need to walk 10 blocks to get to a car, or you need to sometimes Uber to get to a car. It kind of defeats the purpose. And don't even get me started on the parking problem. So we simply cannot find enough parking spots. So then, what, how do we get the entire world to go towards all electric shared model, which is very clear, it will actually sustain. It took me three and a half years. It took us three and a half years to get here. The idea is quite simple. What if an electric car could be remotely driven by a human that will get to you, could be delivered to you, and then you drive it how much of it you want, when you're done, don't even think about parking. Just drop it, walk away. Car is remotely driven by some other human back to another next customer. So what happens here is quite interesting. The same car is heavily utilized by a lot of people and it's barely being parked. The future is happening. We don't have to wait for Robotaxi to be fully, fully implemented. We can do that today. In fact, we're doing that today right here in Las Vegas, right here in downtown. <laughs> With the full support of the state, the city, the DMV of Nevada, We've launched a service right here. So if you go to halo.cart, you can request a car yourself. In five years, I'll talk about how much impact that we're potentially able to make. We only have a small fleet of cars right now driving around. We've just kicked out the service, but it's rapidly accelerating. We're increasing the size of the fleet really quickly. In five years, we're projected to have about 50 billion miles driven under belt with all EVs. That is 20 million metric tons avoided from the, from the airs. 4.3 million gasoline cars removed from the roads, replaced with a very small fleet of electric vehicles. And by 2030, this is very important, this is the year that we need to hit all these metrics. By 2030, our fleet is projected to hit 218 million metric tons from the air. Right? And that is 46 million cars or 20% of all the cars that are there in the US today. Just us. So how do we get everyone to use this? The idea is quite simple. Make it super simple, stupid, right? That's it. Make it also fun while doing that. So uh, with Halo Car, you just have to think about destination. Don't think about parking. Don't think about maintenance. Don't think about that uh, crazy mechanic that's hustling you for more money. None of that. All gone away. No gas, nothing. So push a button, our car shows up. So I'm going to finish, leave you guys with this. I'm a strong believer in three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. How do we apply this to cars? We've been applying this for everywhere, right? How do we apply this to cars? We reduce the number of cars and roads to start. We reuse the car as much as possible for a lot more people to use the same car over and over and over and re recycle the car completely end to end at the end of life cycle, including the battery, including the entire product of the car as is. Darwin once said, it is not the strongest species that survives, it's the one that's most adaptable to change. And we are, let's prove that. This is one earth that we have. I'm so proud to actually sit in front of you right now and share this vision. We have one Earth, let's go protect it. <laughs>